Hi y'all there, cats and kittens. Uh, this is Carol, wait a minute, I'm not Carol Baskin. <laughs> this is James's boat bill. Okay, I have to make a little bit of humor because I am extremely frustrated. And uh, I spent a lot of time on this chine, this inner chine. But we're getting there and I want to share you my frustrations of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Right now, this is good. Because I've filled it in with marine fairing poxy after I've built up with two layers of wood. Yes, I'm sorry, three layers here, two back here. Same thing on this side. Yep, so what had happened is I obviously uh, underestimated the amount of twist that needed to come in when it was going towards the stem. And it left it relatively flat, let's say at this level. And so picture a piece of plywood trying to rest upon here while it needs to be flat. And there is a curve there, but it needs to be touching everywhere, not have a huge hole like there would have been. So I basically filled in this upper portion of chine to compensate for my mistake. I caught it and I've done some um, fairing on the stem and uh, everything else is really coming along good. But um, the bow of this V uh, bottom uh, boat is, you know, kind of proving to be a little bit challenging. My other which is uh, <coughs> a Jeff, <coughs> excuse me, a Jeff Spirer. Oh wow, what's the matter? A Jeff Spirer International um, production. Uh, it's a Carolina dory. It's a V bottom dory, but the V from the outer chine to the uh, the Kielsen is just straight. I mean, it's just it's just straight, which is nothing wrong with it. But it was a lot easier opposed to having the curve that's in here. It's actually bulged up higher and then it comes down. Same thing with this, which is nice because it gives us nice even flow, you know, to the boat, which, you know, great design, but try building it. <laughs> anyway, um, my advice is when you come to this point, if you're building this boat, don't get frustrated. Do the best job you, you can. And remember, if you've built these frames properly and you know that they're accurate, stick with what you know is accurate. Just like what I know is accurate to be true. When I built this strong back, this flat edge is true. I know it to be good and I get my reference points from here. The only reason why I even would have noticed this was uh, going wrong is because I made measurements from the known point of the uh, strong back flat portion to the uh, chine and I noticed it was a half an inch difference. I actually cut this one in a half inch deeper. I had to make up for that compensation and I had to make up for the um, lack of me twisting this um, chine in place. I didn't cut it out properly so I added wood. Now it's, it's sitting up and there's a nice even flow. And I made it even nicer by adding this um, marine fairing because it was loopsy and twisty. And this way, I just came along with my um, my trowel and I flattened a nice smooth edge. And I'll go back tomorrow and fix it and sand it. But uh, these are the problems that I have when um, when building a boat. It's just part of the the deal. Um, don't think you're getting yourself into, you know, you're over your head or I bit off more than I could chew. It's just little progressions of that's how you get it done. I mean, you, if you notice a mistake, you fix it, you move on. You cut away wood, you add wood, and that's what you do. That's how you got to overcome it. And obviously, you have to have a lot of patience. So, anyway...
Uh, this is James, and um, this is my mistake. Now everybody knows. But uh, this is how you fix it. Now everybody knows. And this is the Schnook by Glenn L. Cats and kittens. Why am I stupid?